Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 67, dated October 5th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, Equity Jurisprudence. Equity is a distinct body of law that developed in England as a result of the lack of available remedies or lack of sufficient remedies from the common law or statutory law. Equity cases essentially required more care and attention and for all intents and purposes tailor-made solutions you know to the dispute in question. Uh, solutions that were not available or were wholeheartedly insufficient to the case at hand uh, from the common law courts or from statutory law. Okay, Thus you can see why equity developed as a very distinct body of law because of its need for care, attention, fair and equitable solutions. Solutions that were either insufficient or unavailable from the common law courts. Okay. In England, equity cases were almost exclusively disposed of by a ranking official known as the Lord Chancellor. He was very close to the king. The king had in fact delegated the authority to handle these cases to the Lord Chancellor. Hence why uh, equity courts would be known as chancery courts. All right. This concept, of course, came across the ocean to the American colonies. And by 1775, all 13 American colonies had some sort of judicial body responsible for administering equity cases. And in several colonies, it was known as the chancellor, all right, or a chancery court responsible for disposing of chancery or equity cases. Beginning in the mid 19th century, many U.S. states began to do away with separate equity courts or chancery courts and merged them with the law courts, giving the law courts the ability to dispose of equity cases. Uh, as of 2020, as a matter of fact, there are only a few uh, U.S. states left with either separate courts or separate divisions responsible for administering equity cases and uh, the judges are known as chancellors in some of these places. Uh, these states are Tennessee, uh, South Carolina, New Jersey and Mississippi. All right. Some examples of uh, equity jurisprudence uh, is typically administered through the law courts now are courts which uh, handle probate, uh, most types of family law, you know, divorce, adoption, custody, uh, corporate law, courts that issue injunctions, peace and protective orders. Okay. All of these are forms of equity jurisprudence because they obviously require very tailor-made solutions uh, in most regards. Solutions that are either insufficient or unavailable from the common law or from statutory law, okay? Which, like I said, is why equity developed as a very distinct body of law from its common law counterpart, okay? Equity remains strong throughout the United States even though it has been merged with the law courts and remains a very logical solution for the types of cases that I mentioned to you. Like I said, uh, courts that issue injunctions, uh, writs of mandamus, uh, peace and protective orders, uh, divorce, adoption, uh, custody, uh, corporate law, probate, all of these are typically disposed of uh, by the law courts in the modern era, but make no mistake about it, most of their roots lie in equity. All right? So that about wraps this up. If you have any questions, controversies, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them uh, for you. Like I said, we have just discussed equity jurisprudence, a very distinct body of law from the common law and from statutory law. All right? Thank you for listening to this podcast. Take care. Stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you at the next one. Peace.